with us right now is Dr. Jamie Tawil. He's the internal medicine specialist for the Grand River Medical Associates. Always great to have you with us, Doc. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How are you? Uh, you know what? We're, we're surviving. Like every day <laughs> yeah. is a new day. So a few technical glitches there because I'm working from home. So there are a few issues like that we always have to iron out. Um, um, so if you hear a dog barking, forgive me. <laughs> right, and like we're all used to it now. Zoom and technical issues before you would freak out. Now it's just like, yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> that's, how my, that's how my Christmas was. It was uh, the, my Christmas and Thanksgiving were Zoomed. So that's the, you do the best you can. Exactly. With that, though, uh, good doc, uh, have you been able to get the vaccine yet? I did, actually. I, I got the first shot right before Christmas, and then I got the second dose about uh, two days ago. So it was like three weeks out. So I, I finally I finally got vaccinated through my hospital that I'm affiliated with, and they were able to get me taken care of. Thank God. So we have heard from uh, several individuals that have had it. Mm -hmm. The first shot, they really had no side effects. It was the second one where they had a few issues such as headache or maybe fatigue. What did you experience? So the first shot I felt, I felt, uh, you know, muscle aches, headaches, a little foggy. Uh, that went away rather quickly, but it lasted for about a good 48 hours. Uh, beyond that, um, the second shot, I was pretty tired it, it, and my arm was definitely sore, but I was tired for a day and then uh, I feel great. I, I got the shot Monday, today's what, Wednesday? So. Yesterday, I felt eh, not so bad. Monday, I felt pretty under the weather, but nothing by any means major. It was, you know, I was still able to go to work, still able to do everything. But uh, it was, you know, thankfully, not a, not a bad reaction. The good majority of the reactions that you would have happen with roughly within six weeks of getting the vaccine. So if you're going to have any major reactions, they will happen within six weeks. So it's a good thing because when they were studying this vaccine, they gave a full eight weeks of evaluation before they were able to, you know, it's either going to happen rather immediately or within the six weeks. So the good thing that they did eight weeks and they still were able to suggest that, uh, you know, a good hunk of the people that received the vaccine in early testing were able to tolerate it quite well. Uh, so as a doctor, how did you think this helps you to be able to talk about the vaccine with some of your patients? Because a lot of people are out there are real still in the, in, in the part of eh, not me, not yet. I can understand that. I, I, I I can understand that. I am always going to recommend that you receive the vaccine. It's going to help create that herd immunity that everybody's talking about. The vaccine is is going to help keep you from getting ill. Um, it will, you know, don't make make no mistake. The vaccine is not going to make you immune. And there hasn't been a lot of studies out yet that suggest that just because you've received the vaccine, you're not going to get sick at all. You may just get a milder case of it, and you can still transmit it to other people. So. As always, I'm going to recommend you continue to use the precautions to not have, you know, wear the masks, maintain social distancing until this gets under, you know, more widespread vaccinations versus, you know, uh, uh, we get to that herd immunity point that everybody keeps uh, trying to get to. You're listening to 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake, 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills. And you bring up a good point there because we are all talking about herd immunity and do you get the vaccine? Do you not get the vaccine? And so many people that are getting the vaccine are saying, I'm not necessarily doing it for myself. I'm doing it for other people. But at the end of the day, just like testing was such a big issue, there are a lot of unanswered questions about the vaccine as well. And unlike, you know, taking a mask on, taking a mask off for the testing, this is something that's going in your body that you can't remove. Yeah. So you can kind of understand where people are uneasy uh, about getting the vaccine. I do understand and, and the quickness in which it was rolled out. Um, I can assure you that it's safe. Uh, I mean, I can't guarantee that you won't have a reaction to it. And I, I you know, I'm not claiming that it's going to be 100% safe, but at the same time, it, it should be as safe as any other vaccine. It's essentially the same thing as any other vaccine you would receive, minus, I feel, I believe, actually a few preservatives. I think the, the issue that held out a lot of the vaccine rollout was to be able to do preservatives, which is why I think the vaccine requires such a, you know, that below 70 degrees freezing temperature. Um, I, I understand people's concerns and reservations. I, I, I always recommend it to my patients and I always will. Uh, I'm not going to harp on them. I'm not going to harass them. You, you know, people are capable of making their own decisions, but you are getting the vaccine for other people. 
as well as yourself because once everybody gets vaccinated, then we can move forward and not have to worry about everybody getting ill or people that are not vaccinated. We're not, you know, you know, creating widespread, you know, people that have become inoculated and are, uh, you know, they're a little bit safer, but at the same time, they're not contributing to this humongous spread. Uh, you know, it, it's ultimately going to lead to, to overall safety. One of the things I find fascinating, though, is the thought process beside, you know, behind herd immunity. So I was mentioning with Dr. Faust yesterday, I had recently watched a documentary about the Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone. And how do we get to that point where you can reopen schools, you can reopen businesses and continue to live life as you used to know it? What is that process and why does it just go away? Because if one person gets it, why doesn't it continue the spread? Well, it, that, that's a little tough because right now we're actually dealing with it as we're dealing with it, if, if that makes any sense. You know, most of the time we're able to have, uh, we look at things more from a retrospective point of view, but this time as we're dealing with it, you know, like for example, take the flu shots. We are aware of how that will work, you know, how the vaccines will impact society with regards to flu shots. You know, herd immunity will occur, I imagine, if everybody gets the vaccine and it can, you know, we can prevent a lot of spread. In this case, it's, ha you know, you're either getting sick or getting the vaccine. So it's going to change things just a little bit as we're moving along. The, you know, how do we get there? I think we get there by everybody getting, uh, hopefully I'm answering your question. Uh, we get there by everybody getting the vaccine so that the spread is not as dangerous and we're not overwhelming hospitals. We're not overwhelming the healthcare system, which has been a problem that we've been dealing with for almost a year now. So that really is the focus is trying to keep, uh, because we still get the flu. There's a vaccine for the flu. We still get the flu and we have to remember there are people that do die from the flu every year. Uh, we just don't talk about it. Uh, like probably what really needs to be talked about, but I will say the good thing that's come out of this the number of flu cases are actually down. You called it earlier this year. You're like, yeah, we're anticipating there's going to be fewer flu cases because we are being um, more aware of the virus. And, you know, when you wash your hands and you keep your social distance, that means other viruses aren't going to attack us as well. I do. I do. I think that we're going to, people are starting to realize that these measures will help them through a lot of illnesses and, and they're not wrong to wear the mask and social distance. Um, I can also I can also suggest I don't know how real this is, but you know, just using my own office as a personal anecdote, people do come to me with flu-like symptoms, and they don't want to know if they have the flu. They want to know if they have COVID. We <laughs> test them; it's negative, and then they go about their business. They go, "Okay, I don't have COVID," and then they go, not knowing they may actually have the flu, and they didn't return for testing for the flu. So, I, you know, that may lead to a dip in diagnosis as well. We're not <laughs> testing for the flu as often. But uh, you know, obviously, everyone's more concerned about COVID. Uh, and if you remember, if you do get the vaccine, it should—it's you know—they aim for 50% protection against things, specifically with with vaccines. In this case, it's up to 95%. So it will help you to prevent getting very sick from it. It may not prevent you from getting sick, but it may prevent a more severe, serious reaction because your your body has been basically sensitized to COVID, the COVID uh, the COVID virus. So really, it's a thought process that's the same behind the flu shot. It doesn't mean you're not going to get the flu. You're just not going to get as bad of a case Absolutely. that you would get without it. Uh, with that, uh, so your office, like individual offices, you're not actually giving the vaccine, though, are you? No, uh, I, I'm not. Not for a few reasons. Number one, I'm still under un, un, unsure how to get it. <laughs> um, you know, I got mine through the hospital and I advise people to go to Michigan.gov to see where they're going to fall in terms of being able to receive the vaccine. You know, schools, health departments, things like that. They are going to get the vaccine through their employers. That's how they're going to contract through it. Um, I imagine it'll be a bigger rollout through pharmacies because that's going to be a little bit more global as opposed to individual offices. Not only that, I, I lack the capabilities right now to keep the vaccine at the temperature required. So, uh, you know, I don't know how many vaccines I'd be able to get and I have to be able to give them and maintain enough to be able to give them the second dose. So if I get 100 vaccines and I give 100 vaccines and then I don't get any later on, then I'm in a world of hurt because I have patients that have received the first dose that haven't received the second. And you need both doses in order for it to be completely effective. 
Right. Uh, you know, the sad thing today, um, we are hearing some of the cases too, where some of the hospitals and these entities, they have so many of the doses and people don't want to get them, but they've already taken them out of the freezer. And once they're unfrozen, you can't refreeze them. So yes. they're having to either throw them away because there was an issue of them saying, hey, we don't want to waste them. Let's just find people to give the vaccine to. But there are strict mandates as to who can actually receive those uh, vaccines as well. Yeah, it's a big work in progress and we are stumbling along the way, obviously. And I imagine though, in a couple more months, uh, I, know, I know that Johnson & Johnson is working on a vaccine that doesn't require refrigeration and is only one shot. Um, that may have more preservatives to it. I don't know, I, I, I can't speak on that, but I imagine when that comes out, that'll be a little bit more widespread and a little bit easier to administer. Currently, I think that uh, big companies like pharmacies, are going or or you know larger health groups that are multiple offices are going to be able to have the capabilities to store the vaccine and have a, an ability to you know uh, monitor how they're giving it out to a degree where they can make sure that they're not wasting vaccines and that they're giving them to patients that require it and that they're able to get the second dose. Uh, I'm happy to wait to the end of the line. <laughs> so you want to be that first is the last person to be on some on new medications. So right. And and I am glad that uh because I am hearing that uh mainstream media is possibly going to be added to uh the list of you know basically some of the people on the front lines to be able to start to get it and maybe uh if not this month, maybe next month. Um but being public access, I'm like, okay, I'm happy not to be mainstream any longer. I'll wait until March or April. I'm good. I think in time, people will realize that those that have received the vaccine will be okay. Uh, and it'll probably lead to a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere where people will feel better about getting the vaccine. I think people, I think people are smart and I think people are, are um, smart, I guess. I, I wouldn't use any other word. People are smart. They, they know that it's going to help them in the long run. I think people are anxious to get back to their normal way of life. And I know that, I feel that people are, are aware that this is the way to do it. I think people are cautious and they are rightfully so, honestly, I, I understand that. Um, I do, I, again, recommend it, but if people wanna wait a little bit, I can understand that as well. And I think just time is going to be able to tell. Uh, one of the big questions, but we're still in the midst of this pandemic, we're still having issues about the testing. Nowhere, uh, nowhere near the issues that we had in the beginning, and it is starting to flatten. However, there are still issues about the accuracy of the test. And also, I think it's more important too. people are like, did I already have this? And so they're seeking the antibody test. Mm -hmm. What are you telling your patients who want to get the antibody test? And is there one that's better than the other? Or should you just forego it and wait to get the vaccine? I, you know, the vaccine, so I have a lot of people that want to get the vaccine, uh, correction, sorry, the antibody test. I have a lot of patients that want to get the antibody test to see if they've been exposed to it. Um, I think that whether or not they've, they have a positive antibody, they should still get the vaccine. They should be still, you know, because there are people that there, there've been cases of people that have received, that have gotten COVID have gotten it again. And I have had patients that have had a positive then end up with a negative, believe it or not. So this, this can happen. Um, I know I have patients that I can save, you know, I can think of a few off the top of my head that tested positive for the respiratory. Later on down the road, we tested for the antibody and it was negative. So the antibody will tell you that you've been exposed to it. It won't tell you whether or not you are actively ill or, or have been actively ill, it'll just tell exposure. The people that have not felt a thing ask me if they've received the, the antibody, you know, that have said, you know, my spouse had they had COVID. I didn't feel a thing. I felt great. We test them. They're positive. So it's it's hard to tell what to do in these scenarios. Um, you know, it, it just it only shows exposure. I think the antibody test is a good idea, but at the same time, I, I the question is why order a test if it's not going to change what you do? Um, I'm still going to recommend you get the vaccine. I'm still going to recommend that you maintain precautions. You know, people that have that have been exposed to COVID are not out of the woods. So, you know, I question the merit of the vaccine, the, the antibody test. However, that's all we had at one point in time. So that's what everybody was going with. And now that we have better ways to do it, we have more, uh, you know, we have rapid tests, not 100% accurate, but are, are able to give us a clear idea of where we are. And we also have more accurate nasal swabs that are going to give us a clear idea of whether or not people are actively ill. 
So my question with the antibody testing, it just, we went through this with my own family. Um, my mother had passed away in October and, you know, through the funeral and the process, several family members ended up getting COVID. Uh, we believe it's, it, it was from attending the funeral, but then like when we went to get together for Christmas, it was like, well, six of the eight people already knowingly had COVID. So if, get the antibody test to see if maybe you had it and you didn't know you have it. So then you can get together safely because the whole group's had it. So we're okay to get together. Is there any merit to that thought process? I understand how that thought process might be beneficial, but again, there have been people who have had COVID who have managed to get it again. There have been documented cases of that. So I don't necessarily know if that's going to be the safest route to take. I would recommend against it. I understand that logic and how you know, people that have been together and have done okay. And, and, and that's understandable. Um, but, you know, I'm always going to err on the side of caution. I'm always going to try and do whatever I can to prevent people from getting ill. And so my recommendation, as unfortunate as it is, is to be, to be aware, even if you have a positive antibody test, um, that doesn't mean you are immune and Superman and able to go do these things. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you can't give it to other people. So it, it's, it's something you have to be, you have to be concerned about. I will say, I think about these times, I'm like, oh my God, I am so glad I am married because I could not imagine trying to be a single person and date during these times. I mean, what do you do? You just put your your love life on hold for a, a year, I guess. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> their love life, their career, their families, it's just been, it's been a mess. <laughs> you know, and I, don't, I think everybody is just and it's weird to get back to normal, I think, because we've been doing this for quite a while now, you know, and I, I, uh, I was in one of my patient rooms the other day with my mask off with, you know, by myself. And I, I was talking to someone outside of the room and I actually heard my voice echoing off the walls, which is something I don't normally hear because I have the mask that basically muffles that. So it was, it's, it's odd. It's just surreal how normal this has all become, but it will return to the previous normal. <laughs> it's just going to take some time. I, I will say I'll never get used to wearing a mask yeah. ever. I, I'm that individual that you see when I get out of my car. I'm like, I wait until the very last moment to put my mask on to walk into the store. If I'm walking through the parking lot, free air, you know, so I'm that person. <laughs> and then I realized I forgot my mask. I have to go all the way back to the car. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's a mess. But. We do see them all the time too, right? <laughs> I was uh, t laughing at my husband. Uh, he does sports for Fox 2 and he was able to go, I don't know, I think the Red Wings or one of those entities. And he did his stand up with his mask on. And I was like, no one's around you. You can have the photographer six feet away. I go, you sound like the Peanuts um, cartoons, like the teacher. <laughs> I'm like, I can't understand a word you're saying. So he's talking through the mask onto the microphone. Yes. Oh, poor guy. I, I, at least they can't see his face when they discuss the lions. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's very true, right? <laughs> Dr. Jamie Tuiel, always great having you with us uh, here. Uh, any other things that you're seeing um, it, it is hopefully we come into the end of this pandemic? Um, I'm not I'm not seeing anything majorly different other than what we've been seeing. You know, the vaccine has been out and they're getting shots in arms, thank the Lord. But at the same time, not nearly where we needed to be. I mean, I had just received my second dose. It's been out for a bit now. So I have patients that have been asking me day in and day out, like, when am I going to be able to get it? How do I get it? Can you write me a letter that suggests that I, you know, may need it a little bit earlier? And, you know, we're happy to oblige in those situations when they are merited. But I think the, the thing is, is to everybody should just be patient and continue to go to michigan.gov. That has the ultimate list of, you know, it has the, the, the vaccine dashboard, but that has a clear idea of who has how much vaccine, where you're able to get it, when you're able to get it. And I, again, will always recommend that you do get it. It will help move things along. I, I can guarantee that. Um, I, I don't feel that the, I haven't heard of any cases yet where there've been severe reactions, thank God. And I hope not to hear any. Um, I think that we're, we're on our way. And I, I tell patients, you know, if you're afraid of the vaccine, I get it, but you know, what are we more afraid of, COVID or the vaccine? So, uh, it, it you know people are starting to realize that it, it is important. So I'm I'm glad to see that people are going in the right direction, and just keep it up, guys. We're in the home stretch. It's you know we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. I promise. 
I, I know that in the beginning of this, we had a lot of people that had underlying health issues that weren't going to the hospital. Is yeah. that still a case or is that pretty much those fears have been put to rest because the hospitals have proven that they can handle emergencies and COVID patients at the same time? I think that fear is still there, um, it, unfortunately, but it, and it's going to take a little bit of time. It is better, much, much better. I have patients that are, it used to be a struggle to get a patient to go to the ER. They'd call the office and say, you know, I'm having chest pain and difficulty breathing. I don't want to go to the ER. And, you know, there are some things that the hospitals can provide that I can't do at least and specifically not have results as quickly as I would be able to in the office. So, you know, it was a struggle to get people to go to the ER. I'm seeing a relax of that fear. Some of it is still there. So I think people that have minor issues are more apt to go to urgent care, things like that. Um, but it is getting better. And, and I'm, I'm starting to see things go back to normal. Thank, thank God. Fingers crossed. We're into 2021. Uh, let's hope that at least by what, March, April, May? <laughs> the summertime, at least. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a while. I think the summer will be um, slow, a slow roll back into society. But I think it will, this will be uh, the end of the summer will probably be where everybody will start really feeling that sigh of relief. I'm hoping. Oh, we are also hoping. And thank you, uh, Dr. Jamie Tweel with us here on the Megacast, always being a good friend to us, but also thank you for all of your advice as well, because it's such a confusing time for us in the general public. And I know for yourself as well in the medical community, but at least being able to talk to someone with your knowledge and your expertise can put some of those questions to rest. So we always appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm always available and I love talking to you guys. So I, I appreciate it very much and I look forward to hopefully speaking to you guys again.